right back, two centre halves, Scott Garner and Luke Shields. Uh, it looks like Joe Leesley will be playing left back this, uh, this evening. Uh, we will then have in midfield, looks like a midfield three of Andy Thanodge, Paul Green, and Connor DeMeo. Front three of Jay Rollins, Jordan Burrow, and Jordan Thewlis on the bench. Scott Duxbury, Peter Crook, Tyrell Warren, Terry Hawkridge, Mitch Rose, Fraser Preston, and Jake Wright. For Chesterfield, it's Dylan Wharton in goal. Three centre halves, uh, George Carline, Will Evans. Uh, and Hayden Hollis uh, is then a midfield of Curtis Weston, jo Joseph Yarney, Lawrence Maguire, uh, Joe Rowley and Martin Smith with Liam Mandeville and Marcus Dinanga, the front two. On the bench, Kwasi Asante, Jack Clark, Jack McCourt, Tom Whelan and Reagan Hutchinson. The Chesterfield team have just made their way out onto the pitch ahead of tonight's game. Um, while we've got a chance, Mark, we will talk about what's been happening with the National League today. They've been meeting with the clubs up and down the, the country, National League, National League North, National League South. Statements been put out in the last hour saying there's there's three options. There is a an option of a clubs taking on the loan themselves uh, that is being offered. Uh, the National League taking on the loan in the form of grants to the football club, but then that would mean that central payments from the National League in the future would diminish or would be less than they would be expecting or option number three to suspend the season not saying how long that might uh, last for and, and we're hoping by the end of the week we're going to get a decision because there is a possible there, there is a distinct possibility that this game could mean absolutely nothing it, it could well do come Friday yeah like we say it's, it's an interesting situation uh, we have no idea how the clubs are going to vote as to what they want you know how, how this is all going to be how this is all going to be organised and, and pan out so uh, it's just it's just a difficult situation and it keeps being a difficult situation there's no wrong or right answers to it is there you know you, you can't you can't call it I, I i don't know which way it'll go because i'm not I'm sure how clubs would vote obviously if you're boston united the chance of promotion the chance of maybe getting through to in the fa trophy into the final kind of round so it's obviously their season they want to continue it but Financially, David Newton and, and, and you know the, the hierarchy here at Boston United have got to make sure the finance is right, so it doesn't cost them the club basically. And I'm sure that won't happen, but you know you've just got to safeguard the club. So we'll await that decision. We'll bring news on BBC Radio Lincolnshire over the uh, the coming days. So we're both sets of players uh, are now out. The uh, referee and two captains uh, this evening, which is Will Evans and Luke Shields, just going through the uh, pre-match decision making, and then we will get underway and. Certainly the wind is going to play a part tonight, a chance to play Aldershot, a trip to Aldershot for uh, whoever are the victors this evening. We're uh, just about ready, I think, to uh, get underway. It's going to be Chesterfield who will be kicking off, shooting from right to left as we look at it, Mark. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be hard to tell who's got the, the, the best conditions, really, in this game, isn't it? No, as a player, I always like to play against the wind, believe it or not. I just found it easier as a centre half to come through people and head the ball. But you know, if you're playing, if you're playing with the wind, sometimes it, as a centre half, it's difficult. So I'm, I'm a, from a defender's point of view. But you know, it's going to be a, it's tricky conditions here, and, and we'll obviously just see how this pans out. But certainly, long balls like they just to feel that it's just hit here. It's going to be difficult. And Luke Shields there just got himself sucked under the ball because of the wind. So. Again, it's just adjusting as a centre half, as your defenders, as your defensive shape. So you know, Boston against the wind here must make sure that they, they defend their their area as well. It is going to be a early chance for Chesterfield to load the uh, penalty area. Long throw comes into the box. It's not partially cleared by Boston United. Still, the Pilgrims trying to get it clear. Now they finally do so. And it is now a chance for Boston potentially to get it away down the attacking left. As my stopwatch has decided to give up the ghost. Which <laughs> it's is just too cold. There we go. Well, now we're working. It's woken up. Uh, and it will be a uh, Boston United throw uh, in the opening 45 seconds or so here on uh, BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Hope and glory. Throw for Leesley to take. Going forward, Burrow tries to knock it on to Thewlis. Boston clear through Leesley again. Burrow will attempt to keep it in play. It's going to be cleared along by Hollis up into the air. Doesn't go over the halfway line. Headed back by Boston. Burrow chasing after it. Goes all the way back to the goalkeeper Wharton in his neon pink kit this evening. Header from Garner isn't the greatest. Hootle comes back and then plays a lovely ball into the path of the number 17 for Boston United, Connor DeMeo. 
ball out of play, there will be a uh, Chesterfield throw. And, uh, well, it's uh, certainly a, a big best, uh, Chesterfield back line, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know, James Rose obviously changed the, the score quite a bit for Chesterfield here. I'm surprised by his team selection. or well, maybe not surprised given the given the, the league position they're in at the moment. No Tom Denton. You know, a few of the big names missing. So it's going to be an interesting to see how they how they get on Chesterfield. But certainly Boston again, just just a couple of early balls troubling Scott Garner. Scott Garner just nearly got sucked under the ball there again. So the wind's playing a little bit of a part already. You know, I'll probably keep going on about it because it is tricky conditions as a, as, a, as a player when the wind's blowing straight down the pitch like this. Martin Smith then to take this free kick for Chesterfield just over the halfway line. Chesterfield bringing the big men forward from the back. Here comes Smith's floated ball into the edge of the penalty area. Cleared away but behind for an early Chesterfield corner here. Uh, came off the boot of the experienced Paul Green and it will be a chance for Chesterfield to load the penalty area once again. Yeah, it's going to be interesting afternoon, evening, sorry, for Paul Green and Andy Penelge in that centre of the pitch with Conor DeMeo. Must try and be brave and get on the ball, especially in these conditions, because to try and put balls over the top is going to be difficult against the wind, so they've got to get it on and pass the ball well. Right-footed out, swinging corner for the away side. Comes in towards the penalty spot. It's headed towards goal. It's just wide. It will be a goal kick. Chesterfield wanted a corner kick there, wanted a... Another corner, but referee decides to give it Boston's way. It remains goalless three minutes in. Yeah, a bit of a free header there. I couldn't quite see who it was for Chesterfield, but I think it was the big centre half. The number six coming up from the back there. And he got a free header, and I thought, it, I must admit, I thought it hit the back of the Boston United defenders there and it should have gone out for a corner, but the referee decided otherwise. So I want a little bit of a semi let off for, for Boston there. Played long from. Simmons goal kick Burrow can't win the header comes back to Garner he scoops it up into the air but it goes wide rather than forward Shields wins the header up against Dinanga second header for Shields to try and win against Smith Shields now clears it off Mandeville and it will be a uh, Boston United throw once again for Tootle to uh, get but we saw there from Scott Garner's clearance it, there was no height a lot of height on it but it didn't get forward at all it just went to his uh, to his right yeah you've really got just to adjust your technique in these conditions when you're trying to drive a ball you really have to drive it into the wind and so start it off a little bit lower than you probably would do just to get the distance on it because as soon as it goes up in the air it's going to get affected by the wind and it's a really scrappy start to the game both sets of players struggling with the conditions Nobody able to get their foot on it. Exchange of possession quite quickly between the two teams. So real no no pattern of play at all from either side at the moment. No. And that's summed up by Matt Tootle throwing it straight out of play. Long throw over the top. Shields plays it up into the air. And uh, well I think that did just go out of play for a second. There didn't even look like it had gone no, out of play, like did it? It, it, was gonna, it, like it was just going to be held up in the in wind and, the, and keep the ball in. So like I say keep going on about it it's such tricky conditions for a football player to play in you know, you know these are semi-pro players that are getting paid reasonably well you know and another semi-pro but Chesterfield will be full time and here come Chesterfield now ball into Rowley edge of the penalty area plays it across goal it's scooped behind by a Boston man it will be a corner for the away side once again with a neat play into Rowley uh, and wasn't too far away from finding a teammate yeah, Rowley just got on the wrong side of Scott Garland there. And Andy Panos did really well covering midfield player just to just to cover the penalty spot area where Rowley was trying to cut it back to. So good good defensive play from the central midfield player, Andy Panos there for Boston. Another corner then for Chesterfield, second of the evening. This time floated in towards the penalty spot. Fitzsimmons comes, drops it, still fighting for it in the penalty area. Shot comes in, it's blocked by Boston. Then a sliding challenge comes in and now Boston can break away. There's a bit of a collision between two players in the penalty area, but it's Boston coming forward. Jay Rollins, though, gets taken out on the halfway line by Joseph Yarny. And I think we could see Mark an early yellow card here for Yarny. Yeah, great play from Jay Rollins. We'll come on to the, the little the little scramble in the penalty area in a minute, but great play from Jay Rollins. Just cut back across Yarny, and Yarny didn't have anywhere to go other than to bring him down. So for me, a correct decision, a yellow card. So Yarny's going to have to be careful the next 80 odd minutes of this game but no good, good play from Jay Rollins and then a little bit of a scramble Fitzsimmons died, lost it in the in the penalty area in the wind and a bit of a scramble and Boston were lucky to get away with that one. Tootle plays it forward 
flicked on by Garner. Burrow goes down. Another Boston United free kick. Left-hand corner of the penalty area. Chance to deliver a good ball into the box now. Or is it going to be a shooting opportunity for Andy Tanodge? He's certainly lining things up. Referee just making him move it ever so slightly. And uh, Chesterfield are going to bring everybody back. Denanga just comes back for a second or two. Is he going to join in the wall? He is. So... Uh, Good chance here for Thanos, free kick specialist. Yeah, Chesterfield, we've already heard their physical side and on the front foot and to be aggressive both in their forward play and in their tackling. So, bit of a silly free kick to give away, but Andy Thanos stood over it. We know what he can do. We've seen it before. So Thanos steps up right footed with the free kick. Lovely curling effort, palmed away by the goalkeeper Wharton to his right hand side. It was a comfortable save for Wharton, one you'd expect him to make. Ball up in the air. Garner tries to flick it forward. It's now with Boston United on the right with Thewlis. Thewlis looks to go past his man. Still, Thewlis keeping hold of the ball. Thewlis then gets tackled by Carline and it's cleared only into the path of Tootle. Forward pass finds De Mayo. Lovely play from De Mayo. Finds the ball back through to Tootle. Just stretching to keep it in play. It's across to the far post. Burrow was there. Free kick will go against Burrow for the foul on Will Evans, but again, good play from the Pilgrims. It remains nil-nil, eight minutes in. Yeah, great great shot from Andy Thamis from the free kick. Walton just manages to palm it away. It was a comfortable save. And then the second phase was excellent. Tootle getting to the byline, dinks the far post, just as Jordan Burrow wanted. But I have to say, that's fantastic defending from the skipper, Will Evans, for Chesterfield. He got himself in a great position, and Jordan Burrow, all he could do was climb all over him to try and get to the header. It's a great defensive play from Chesterfield. Will, Will Evans comes to his aid of his side there because for all intents and purposes I thought Jordan Burrow was just going to power the ball into the back of the net but like I say Will Evans for Chesterfield great defensive great defensive clearance for him Miss Q from Maguire now to play for a uh, Boston United throw for Tootle to take just waiting for a uh, ball to be retrieved just going on to Tootle's cross it's such a difficult skill to get to the byline and get your foot to wedge it at the angle he was running at, to get it to stand up to the far post. It's fantastic technique from him. It's really, really tough to do. Tootle gets the ball back from the throw, plays it into the edge of the penalty area. Cleared long by Chesterfield. Thanoj can't control it. It's going to drift all the way back to Fitzsimmons in Boston's goal. He does a drilled ball forward. One for Burrow to try and win. Climbs over the back of Hollis. Referee allows play to continue now forward pass from Boston's a good one oh Paul into the penalty area Rollins goes down does he get a penalty he doesn't oh. Craig Elliott's on the pitch he wants a penalty Dewis and Rollins lovely oh. neat play in between them uh, and Jay Rollins there not too much of a argument from him but from the Boston United bench they wanted uh, the spot kick to be given Mark where's VAR when you need it no, I, I've seen them given it's a tough one because Jay Rollins just changed the angle of the ball and the defender had nowhere really to go. Now, whether it was Jay Rollins actually running into the defender or the defender actually colliding with Jay Rollins, it's a tricky one. I, I thought it should have been given, but then I might be slightly biased. <laughs> but great play, like you say. Jane Jordan threw this in between the lines. He did a really great little reverse ball into Jay Rollins, and I, I, I thought that was a penalty, I have to say. Fitzsimmons plays it long for the Pilgrims. Still 0-0 here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Rob Makepeace, Mark Cone, your commentary team. Thewlis plays it forward into Burrow. Lovely turn from Burrow. He's got Green in the penalty area. Burrow goes for the shot in at the near post. It's an easy catch for Dylan Wharton. It's been a real strong start from Boston United. And we see Chesterfield very tall, looking a physical side, Mark. But then I guess when you have so many physical players, you lose that athleticism a little bit. And that's where Boston are getting the joy. In the yeah, they, they, they don't look very mobile, do you? Like, Rob, you picked up on the, the three centre halves are quite wide apart. And they're, they're Boston, they're just finding gaps in between them. And just as we see a long ball go straight through. Yeah, they, they're quite, the distances aren't quite right for Chesterfield's back three at the moment. And Boston United, they're just getting in between them, in and around Will Evans. And finding gaps along down the side of him. But Chesterfield, if they don't want to go a goal behind, they're going to have to just tighten that back three up a little bit. Burrow goes to win the flick on, but only finds Maguire. He goes back to his goalkeeper, Wharton, with 11 minutes in. It is nil-nil between Boston and Chesterfield. Winners facing Aldershot away in the next round of the FA Trophy. But good play from Chesterfield. The ball played through to Rowley. He's onside. Rowley, go oh, great save from Fitzsimmons. Rowley picks it back up. Another great save from Fitzsimmons. 
real good goalkeeping from Boston's number one there. First to stop Rowley going round him, and then the second chance he got up quickly to palm it behind for a Chesterfield corner. Yeah, just as I was criticising Chesterfield's defensive unit, well, that's a real attacking threat there. Basically, Denanga just come short, played a little one-two. He's got Rowley in, third man running. He should do better, the Chesterfield man, but apart from some fantastic goalkeeping again from Ross Fitzsimons, the first one's a great save because it all intent to Percy's rally was round him and he just put a big strong left hand in and then got up himself up to get the second shot as well. Another corner then for Chesterfield. Ball played in towards the penalty spot, headed away by I think it was a Chesterfield head in Yarny. Thanos tries to win the 50 50. Ball is on the halfway line now with Mandeville forward pass looks for Denanga but it's going to run through to Ross Fitzsimmons we've got a real open game here Mark haven't we what 12 minutes in we've seen not necessarily clear-cut chances but some decent opportunities for both teams yeah obviously Chesterfield have come here to win as you would do they're in good form at the minute just as we give the ball away in midfield Boston United that is and Thanos a little bit sloppy a good stretch from, <laughs> from important stretch yeah. stops the ball getting through there to Denanga is with Matt Tootle at the moment goes back into Thanodge, just skips past his man, and it will be a free kick for Boston. Rowley, the man who was fouled, but yes, there's a few opportunities in there for both sides. Rowley's had a couple of chances for Chesterfield, and, and for Boston United, we've seen the best of uh, their forward play coming through uh, Tootle's cross and the, the header at the far post. Yeah, exactly. I know, we were you know you've, you've talked to people that have watched Chesterfield, they play a higher pressing game, and I was just saying, wasn't I, just before they kicked off, you know, De Mayo and Thanodge and Paul Green have got to get on the ball, they've got to be brave on the ball and make sure that, you know, they get through that first press if Chesterfield do do that. Free kick played forward, Boro can't win the first header, it's still with Boston, but then Boro gives away the foul on Will Evans, so it will be a Chesterfield free kick to be taken by Dylan Wharton, Chesterfield getting their men forward here. Yeah, an open start and an equal start, I think. I think Chesterfield have had a couple of opportunities, same as Boston. So, oh, there's even the first 15 minutes of this game. Morton looking for the short pass, but I think we're going to have to go along with Boston pressing quite high. Maguire holding back for a second or two, but it will be cleared long by the Chesterfield goalkeeper. Denanga heads it, but heads it more Boston United way rather than Chesterfield. It's back with... Tootle just has to be careful. Mandeville was lurking behind him. Fitzsimmons low clearance forward but gets away with it. It's now with Evans on the halfway line. Looks for the forward run of Yarny, sprinting to try and keep it in. But it just ends up going into the protection for the pitch on the side and it remains 0 0. Yeah, Ross Fitzsimmons just got to be careful of his clearances. I know what he's trying to do. I thought we, I was saying he's got to try and drill the ball just to try and get some distance on his kicks. But he's got to make sure he doesn't scuff it. It's two now that he's scuffed trying to drill it. He's got to get his technique right. Ball all the way back to the Chesterfield goalkeeper, Wharton. We're coming up to the quarter of an hour mark. It is still Boston nil, Chesterfield nil. Thewlis was chasing after it. Now Burrow pressing high and certainly making Chesterfield play some risky balls. The Boston midfield and attackers all working in unison. Ball with Mandeville on the halfway line. Good challenge though. And now there's a chance for Thewlis to be played in. They just couldn't find the pass through though. It was Connor DeMeo trying to play that ball through and Thewlis looking a frustrated figure there. But still Chesterfield now coming forward. Long, long, long ball forward. Rollins has to be careful. Gets something on it but not really enough. Uh, now with Mandeville. Cuts inside on his right foot. Shot straight into Fitzsimmons. But dangerous again. Both ends there. It was nearly the pass through from DeMeo for Thewlis. And then at the other end Jay Rollins doing half a job but not getting the, the final job done. Yeah, it's a, it's a good game. Given the conditions, I'm really being impressed with both sides at the moment. Chesterfield want to try and get it down and pass it, but they're doing it with a purpose. They're trying to get Denanga in to come to short to feet and then get runners in behind him on that third man running. It's a good equal contest at the moment. Luke Shields didn't want that off Tutu. No, he's just got a bit of a knock by yeah. the looks of it. Ball has been played out. It's going to clear over the top of the stand and yeah, Luke Shields is just struggling here now if there's one area Boston don't want to pick up an injury it is at centre half because there is no option centre half wise is there for No, for with Boston. Pittsburgh going back to Eastley it's, it's they're short there really it's something Craig Elliott will have to look at if the season does continue after Friday Chesterfield's throw comes to nothing now with Paul Green one back by DeMayo but free kick 
goes against the Pilgrims. We are 16 and a half minutes in, still goalless. Ball with Hollis for Chesterfield on the halfway line. Finds Evans. He goes for the long cross field pass. Carline heads it forward. Is it going to be kept in by Mandeville? He does well to keep it in the Chesterfield man. Rollins stops the pass getting through to the away side. Cleared away by Boston. Now DeMeo looking for the ball over the top, looking for the run of Burrow. Good header from Hollis. Stops it finding him, just nods it to his right to Evans. Still Chesterfield in possession. Ball played into Mandeville once again. There's a forward run from Rowley. He's in on goal again. Another chance for the number seven. And he's put it into the side netting. He should have had a hat trick by now. And it remains nil-nil. Yeah, great play from Chesterfield again. Just the rotation in midfield. Completely bamboozled with Boston there. Paul Green, Connor DeMayo, Andy Thanodge all at sea. He managed to get Rowley in. He, he, come, he basically came in off the off the right hand side and Leasley didn't follow him and he's, they've got to shut that channel down between Scott Garner and Leasley because he's in well he's in he's been in two or three times now it's, and it's why has he not gone across the goalkeeper there it's an identical ball isn't it every yeah, single time every single time and all they're doing is a rotation so the centre rafters are just looking for that little bit of rotation just to make sure they can get that midfielder free and then they're looking for runners and certainly early the one who's, who's getting himself free like I say down that channel between Scott Garner and Joe Leasley and that's a channel, look, Joe Leasy's starting position has got to be slightly narrower. If they're not, they're going to get punished. Boston winning back possession on the halfway line with the man we were just speaking about, Leasley. Looks to play out to his left to DeMeo, but the ball had gone out of play. Will be a Chesterfield throw switch on is the call from Craig Elliott, the Pilgrims manager. Yeah, just John McDermott must be looking at that and just thinking, you know, Yarny's just pulling Joe Leasley wide and there's that gap that Rowley just seems to be able to get himself into. And it's a big gap and they've got to do something about that because you, you don't want to give Rowley any more opportunities because surely he's going to take one of them. He's had three like you say Rob and he's not really tested Fitzsimons as probably as much as he should do. And the Thanos battling midfield does really really well. Yeah ball with Thanos goes back to Garner all the way back to Fitzsimmons being put under quite a bit of pressure. He looks to play the ball forward. Green will try and win the flick on. Burrow gets there and then gets caught late. Referee is going to have a free kick for Boston United, but good play from centre forward from Burrow chasing back to win the ball. Yeah, FA Trophy winner, John Burrow with York. He's been to Wembley and I'm sure he'll want to go back there. He says it's his highlight of his career so far. And for players at this level, we get to Wembley in FA Trophy final. That's as probably as good as it gets. Yeah, the season they knocked out Lincoln in the semi finals. Uh, correct, yeah. That was the day. The all conquering Lincoln team. Yeah. They didn't quite get there, did they? The only disappointment of the season that year, the promotion that year. Ball play forward by Tootle then with the free kick. Burrow goes to flick it in. It's towards Green, edge of the penalty area. Looks for the pass back through. It's still with Boston. Shot up into the air from DeMeo. It's cleared away, not fully though by. Chesterfield, Carline gets a better header on it. Now into Denanga, he goes down under Tootle's challenge, and it will be a Chesterfield free kick. Yeah, just fantastic day out to get to the trophy final. Obviously, I went with my lad in North Ferry, but big Tom Denton, who, who plays for Chesterfield up top, he's not playing tonight. He was one of the catalysts for that road to Wembley for North Ferry. But disappointed he's not here and not playing, to be honest with you. But like I say, I think Luke Shields and Scott Garner will be very happy that he's not playing. Oh, well won by Leasley from Chesterfield's pass. Leasley still moving forward. Goes to his left to Burrow. Fires it across goal. It's cleared away by Chesterfield. Back into the edge of the penalty area. DeMeo can't get the shot away. Chesterfield clear it away. Only to Thanodj, 25 yards out. Rollins tries to get there. But Chesterfield now able to break. And it is Rowley moving forward. He's got a run from Denanga. Looks to play in Denanga to the right. He will get the ball. He's got his back towards goal at the moment. Back to the halfway line now for the away side. Still goalless. 20 minutes in, just gone. Now back with Dylan Wharton. Plays it short to Hollis once again. Yeah, just looking for that rotation in midfield. We'll play off a front man, which they've done here. And it's now runners. It's good play. And it's Carline moving forward now for Chesterfield. 25 yards out from goal. And he gets the pass all wrong. Can't find his teammate in Denanger. It goes behind. And it is a goal kick, still nil-nil. Yeah, Chesterfield looked really dangerous. As soon as they're able to break the lines, 
in terms of the, the, pre the initial press from Boston United, if Chester doesn't get through the initial press of Jordan Borough, Jordan Thewlis and Conor DeMayo, they're, they're in and Paul Green and Andy Thanos have really got to be careful that they stay with Runnard. Ball played forward for Tootle, Garner then plays it up into the air. Burrow goes to win it and Burrow just get it and then the foul is called. Yeah, it was a little nudge by Jordan Thewlis. He tried to be sneaky. I think it was on the skipper Evans. Just tried to suck Evans under the ball. And to be fair, it was a free kick. If the referee hadn't seen it, he yeah, was in. He was in. Telling the Premier League, Man City beating Villa by two goals to nil. Dean Smith sent off for Aston Villa as well. So I'm not sure what happened in that game. For that to happen, it's still goalless here. Chesterfield have an offside decision go up against Mandeville. And, uh, well, John McDermott and Craig Elliott, they're looking like they're air traffic controllers at times, the way they're, they're stretching their arms out. Yeah, they're just trying to get Jordan Thulis not to place the central and try and do the, the right sided back, uh, the right sided so defender of the back three because it seems like they're getting out too quickly, too easily on that right hand side. So they just want Jordan Thulis just to go a little bit wider and to stop him getting the ball. And that's why they look like they're actually <laughs> traffic controllers. They want Jay Rawlings just to play a little bit wider here as well in front of us. Fitzsimmons plays the ball forward. Burrow can't win the header. Back to the halfway line. Garner's pass is uh, not the greatest. Rollins has to come back and retrieve it, though. Good play from Boston's winger. Now out wide to DeMeo. Just stops it getting through to Leesley. DeMeo finds the forward ball into Burrow. Back now to Leesley. Goes in field and then comes back out to the wide area on the halfway line. Boston currently going back rather than forward. Garner all the way back to Fitzsimmons who won't want many more of them fat passes with the wind against him. Ball is with Garner once again. Garner looks to play a long straight ball down the middle of the pitch. Headed away by Chesterfield. Ball played back forward by Thanodge and now to play for a Chesterfield thrown after that scrappy five minutes we had a, an exciting 15 and now we've gone for a scrappy couple again Mark. Yeah they've almost almost tested each other hasn't they and, and it's, it's still remained goalless so it's almost got a little bit nervy again and possession exchanging quite quickly between the two teams like you say Rob the, the, that 15 minutes of excellent football we had from both teams it's just just again descended into a little bit of we'll give you the ball and then we'll have it back and then we'll give it back to you kind of scenario I just wish Boston would just get on the ball a little bit more once they're in possession of it. You know, Scott Garner just hoisting a 40-yard ball in this win. It's this win is not really going to help. So it's about getting the ball down and trying to play against this win. Shields just nods it back through to Ross Fitzsimmons. Takes a couple of uh, touches with 24 and a half minutes in. Still nil-nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Fitzsimmons just drops the ball at his feet. Plenty of time for him to shape up this forward pass. One for Burrow to try and get on. Chesterfield man in Hollis goes down and wins the free kick. Yeah, he's doing well there. Well, as he's just, he just literally stepped across John Burrow. He just witnessed where Burrow was going to run and just stood in the way. And Burrow just clattered into him. Easy free kick for the referee to give that. Hollis looks to switch play from the centre to the right to Rowley. Long ball forward from the number seven. Mandeville making the run. Mandeville still has it. Tootle's out there with him all the way from right back. And then Tootle slams the ball away and he's given a free kick. And this is as good as a corner for Chesterfield. Yeah, Mandeville this time making the run. Rowley's setting him up. So, again, good rotation from Chesterfield in that midfield area. They're just, they're just asking the midfield of Boston all sorts of questions taking it in turns to do the third man run of Chesterfield midfielders and like you say Andy Thanodge, Paul Green who's got the experience in them need to use need to use that experience be vocal to make sure that they track runners. Is a Chesterfield free kick then right next to the corner flag right footed out swinger for the away side looking for the first goal in this game ball is played in all the way to the far post it drops to the feet of Evans still it's with Evans looks to play it back out. Boston defending at the moment, still with the away side, all the way back to the halfway line to number eight, Curtis Weston. Weston goes back out to the right now for Chesterfield. Drilled ball into the edge of the penalty area. Boston 
trying to clear. And if they can, maybe they can mount a counter attack here. And there's plenty of space for Leesley to move forward. Fulis making a run for Boston. Ball into Jordan Fulis. He's all on his own at the moment. Oh, looks to skip past two Chesterfield men. Great play from Jordan Fulis. And he's won himself and his team a free kick as we reach the 27 minute mark. Yeah. Chance for Chesterfield at the far post. Thankfully, it fell to Evans. His first touch was awful. He actually nutmegged himself with his first touch. It's a great opportunity. It was, it? yeah. If his first touch was out of his feet and it was a good one, he would have had a strike on goal and probably should have, would have scored. But his touch actually took it behind him and through his legs. So, chance gone. And then a great ball from Leesley up the line. Jordan Fuse with a great run and just tried to dink in between the two defenders as they came towards him. But was brought down to another dangerous free kick here. So, it's again about pace on the free kick and get across your men. Here's the chance then for the Pilgrims. Ball played in. It's a decent ball as well. It's a good save from the goalkeeper, Wharton. Good handling from him. He bowls it out to his right-hand side. And it's Chesterfield looking to mount a counter-attack. Long ball forward. Too much on it, though, for Denanga. And it runs through to Ross Fitzsimmons. It's been a, a non-stop game so far, hasn't it? We've hardly had any stoppages for free kicks or anything like that. Or slow play. It's constant attack after attack for both teams. Yeah, the, the pace of the game is brilliant. It's really, really good. It's a high-tempo game. Both teams want to want to try and compete. And it's, it's again, Jordan Burrow just physically. As Rollins tries to keep it in play, goes out for a goal kick. Yeah, I just thought Jay Rollins was going to keep that in for a split second, which is why I cut off. But no, it's, it's, a, it's a good pace to the game, good intensity. Both teams going for it. You know, they're not holding back. They're trying to look to, you know, I think Boston have almost become the counter-attacking team. Just to feel with a, a little bit more of deliberation about their attacks. But they're just trying to get... You know, use this wind on the big diagonal there. Oh, nearly a fantastic ball, but then again, the wind takes it and it just takes it away from the from the players. So it's got to be so accurate that that diagonal ball from the centre backs for Chesterfield. And but it seems Boston, the tactic, especially now you can hear Craig Elliott when it gets to to Hollis, they're they're saying to the Boston players, let him have it, as they feel he probably won't cause any any danger yeah, with the ball at his feet. Yeah, it's just because you just keep your defensive shape. Because if one person goes and the rest of the team don't follow it. It then becomes where you, you, they can pick you off, and that's exactly what Chesterfield have been able to do. Thewlis tries to break away from a couple of Chesterfield men. Boston go and win the ball back once again. It's with Paul Green. He gets dispossessed, and it will be a free kick for the foul on Connor DeMeo. And the referees had not too much to do, really. He's had quite a lot of simple decisions, hasn't he, David Richardson, tonight? I think the only debatable one so far has been the, the Jay Rollins penalty shout. But apart from that, it's been good officiating, hasn't it? It's been quite clear, just making that decision and, and sticking it with it and, and playing advantage when he can. I thought he was a little bit finicky for his five, two minutes, but even he settled down. The game got better, so I think he's made some correct decisions. The penalty one's still debatable for me, uh, but it's, it, it's competitive without being dirty. It's, it's been a good game. Free kick played in. Shields goes up with the goalkeeper. Rollins tries to get it in. It's cleared away. It was heading into the bottom corner. It was an important clearance for Chesterfield. Boston take the quick throw for Green into DeMeo. Ball out of play for a Chesterfield throw and it looked like it was the captain Will Evans who was just behind his goalkeeper there couldn't win the aerial challenge for goalkeeper and Rollins with the hooked effort with his left foot uh, but it was cleared away by uh, the Chesterfield captain Mark. Yeah, Walter just again looked a bit shaky on that ball didn't he? It was a challenge and he didn't collect it cleanly and we've seen Ross Simmons, Ross Fitzsimmons sorry have a, a struggle with the high ball in these conditions so again something maybe that Ross United and Craig Elliott will, will, will say to his, uh, his players, you know, the goalkeeper looks shaky there when he came to collect it. Like I say, if it wasn't for Will Evans getting back on the line to clear Jay Rollins' effort, Boston would have taken a the lead there. At the half hour mark, the rain continuing to fall here in Lincolnshire. It is uh, Boston nil, Chesterfield nil if you are just joining us. Shields can take his time going back to Fitzsimmons, takes a touch just outside of his penalty area and then plays it long. Burrow goes up to win the header and does well, flicks it forward. Fulis can't get there. Evans goes all the way back to Wharton, his goalkeeper. He does clear it. It's a good clearance. Shields with the header back. Leesley trying to get there but can't do so. Good sliding challenge in the midfield from DeMeo to win back possession for Boston. Now with Leesley on the halfway line. He looks for the run down the left of Fulis, who's going to sprint to keep it in play. Fulis looks to go past Evans. Evans goes down to the ground. It will be. Boston's first corner of the of the uh, the evening as we reach the 31st minute. Yeah, this is a really good game considering the con conditions. Both teams attack-minded, want to get forward. And Will Evans, full stretch there to keep Jordan Thulis away from getting round the back of him. 
and been into the penalty area. Had to give the corner away. But Jordan Thulis again, I keep saying it all the time with Jordan Thulis, he could be such a good player and could play at a higher level. It's just his end product. Here comes the corner then in towards the near post. Poor corner cleared away by Chesterfield. De Mayo nods it back down. It's another chance for Boston to get the ball into the box. Still Boston with it into the edge of the penalty area. Cleared away by Chesterfield. Oh, it's a miscued clearance. Dulis tries to get it, drives in the shot. It goes wide of goal. Good opportunity once again for Boston United. They've certainly, I think, been the better of the sides, but Chesterfield maybe have had the, the best of the chances. Yeah, again, it's Jordan Thule, it's just a snapshot, really. A couple of mistakes from Chesterfield and he's trying to clear their lines, and it, it just fell on the half volley for Jordan Thule, and he swung his right foot out. It could have gone anywhere. It just went past the post. And that's, that's better from Andy Thanos, really biting in midfield. Yeah, Rowley with the foul on Joe Leesley for a Boston United free kick. Still, we await the first goal of this game, the shot awaiting the uh, winners could see Boston with a reunion with Ricky Miller of I course. I was just thinking just that yeah I was just thinking that. Re-signed at, at Aldershot scored on his uh, his debut which was good to see one of uh, the great Boston United strikers we've had over the last few years last 10 years or so long ball forward from Boston Garner can't win the header cleared away by Chesterfield Mandeville trying to hold it up and does well to get past a couple of Boston players including Green now Here's the number four, Yarny moving forward. Looks for the run of Denanga in behind Leasley. Denanga sprinting. Leasley there with him. Leasley gets a challenge in and then should be able to clear and gets fouled as he goes to clear it. And uh, it will be a Boston free kick. Yeah, you look over the last few years or the last 10 years, I say time flies, isn't it? Uh, Ricky Miller, uh, Dale Southwell went on to have a, uh, you know, a time in the Football League and is, is now playing regularly at uh, National League. Kavongo Shimanga, of course, another player who I know you're, you're, you're a world. big fan of. Uh, you know, another good player, though, who, who, who again, you know, Boston have had Adam Marriott. There's been a lot of strikers over the last 10 years that have, have gone and, and done a, a good job at a higher level. Yeah, Ricky Miller's the one that stands out, doesn't he, really, out of all of those. You know, he, he, he's a pure goal scorer. He's a pain in the backside if you're a defender at this kind of level. And I'm sure he'll do well at all this shot. He seems like he's got himself fit. I watched his uh, his Twitter feed as he was getting fitter and fitter and stronger oh, and stronger. It's a oh, mistake from Chesterfield. The goalkeeper came forward and it was the pass played back by Hollis. Nearly went behind him and Chesterfield have got away with that one. And that could have oh, a little bit more pace on that and it would have been past Walton. And that would have been a real difficult situation and probably Boston would have just killed through to just run onto that and scored. So again, a little bit of a mix-up. Walton doesn't play on a regular basis. I don't think for Chesterfield in goal, and that just James Rowe, the manager, just gives him a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a thumbs up and a little bit of applause, just for just a little bit of encouragement for the young goalkeeper. Denanga tries to play the ball back. It is with Chesterfield into the penalty area. Shot is blazed over from Yarny, and behind for a goal kick. Yeah, talking of, of goalkeepers, spotted the uh, former Lincoln City goalkeeper Grant Smith here this evening, helping out with Chesterfield's warm up. I think he's without a club at the moment, so uh, I think Repeat's going to be the man who will uh, be taking the reins at Chesterfield, or whether he's just on a trial basis here. Yeah, chances for both teams, isn't it, in this game? How it's nil-nil at the moment is beyond me, really. Both teams have had good chances. Penalty shout for Boston as well. Ball with Boston in the midfield. Thanoj trying to juggle it and then gets dispossessed. It's Mandeville moving forward. Mandeville looks for the ball through to Dinanga plays it back across goal half cleared by Shields and Fitzsimmons comes and gathers decent chance again for Chesterfield where they maybe don't have the mobility in their back line certainly do in their attacking play yeah Dinanga again just causing problems threatening you know he started the game quite well for me he's come short and set the third man running up coming off the two center halves quite well and there he's just his decision making was wrong he's never really set himself to put that ball across the box and it was easy for Luke Shields to make sure he got himself in the right position just to clear his lines. It's time to come and clear it. Garner clears it long for Boston. Thewlis trying to get it out on the left. Still nil-nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Thewlis just drives it out of play. We've got about 10 minutes to go until half-time. Best of the chances coming for uh, Chesterfield. Joe Rowley played in on goal a couple of times and not able to make the most of it. And Boston have had a few half-chances as well, haven't they, Mark? 
which you, you always expect the goalkeeper to save, but a few shots on target, which will please Craig Elliott, who's been calling for a bit more of an attacking threat from his forward players in recent weeks. Yeah, they, they just need to be more clinical. They're creating chances. They just like sort of Bradford Park Avenue. You know, they created a hatful of chances, but couldn't really take them and weren't clinical enough in the opposition's area. Ball with Boston and with Leesley. Plays it forward into Fulis. Fulis slips as he tries to find the pass through to DeMeo. And in fact, the foul is given against Chester. It will be a Boston United free kick. Yeah, Bradford Park Avenue always a difficult place to go to. Chester conceding late on last night. They uh, yeah, asked three, your three own goal, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah three, Josh three. Allen, former Boston man scoring an own goal late on. Three or draw on the uh, artificial surface at Bradford last night, which did Boston some favours in the league table. So you, you, you think about that point, you know, that I thought Boston were far away the better side. As the free kick comes in from Leesley, headed away by Weston for Chesterfield. Dinanga holds it up, now looks to set the former Solihull Manning car line off, but down the attacking left for the away side. Boston getting players back, Green and Rollins with it, and it will be a Boston United throw. Yeah, Jay Rollins did brilliantly there. You know, we know, you know he's quick, and that, that works both ways. You know he's quick, and he can get to the byline, he can cause defenders problems, but that defensively he was brilliant there. Carline had three or four yards, and he just closed that gap very, very quickly, and Carline just ran out of play, had nowhere to go. Rollins wins the header from the flick on. Now with Fulis, bit of space for Leesley making the forward run, but Fulis driving towards goal, plays it out to Leesley. Burrows at the far post, Leesley gets it, plays it in towards the far post. Green there, takes it down with his chest, looks to play it across goal. And maybe should have gone for the strike himself, as now Chesterfield looks to come forward. Good header from Garner, stops it getting from Denanga momentarily, but now Denanga running at the Boston defence. Garner puts a tackle in on him, Green does well and it'll go all the way through to Fitzsimmons and he can gather another good chance there for Boston United but Green good first touch with the chest and then just trying yeah. to pass it across the goal I, th I, th I can't I, th I think it was Jordan Burrow that I think he saw out the corner of his eye when he was chesting it but Jordan Burrow then darted in behind the defender rather than just coming towards Paul Green so the chance was missed but then Chesterfield on the counter-attack Boston just completely cleared their midfield and all of a sudden Chesterfield were almost in Burrow plays the ball over the top the head of again for a second from Maguire you could just see that was going to go past the goalkeeper Wharton for a minute a second they were very close together wasn't they when yeah, uh, Maguire nodded that back he looks a young goalkeeper in it it just look, looks like he lacks a little bit of experience when the balls when the defenders are facing him and his communication probably needs to be a little bit better nil nil here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire Rob Makepeace Mark Cohn your commentary team tonight FA Trophy fourth round action for you live on the BBC Sport website. Yeah, there's, there's the rotation in midfield again, Rob. You can see what they're trying to do. They're just trying to play short, play short, and then they're just trying to play into a midfield player that's going to get the runner on the midfield three for Boston. But to be fair, Boston have tightened up now. It looks like they've gone, um, they've gone man for man in the centre of the pitch. And it looks like that's working a lot better for them. It's Chesterfield a little struggling to find the men in midfield. Maguire plays it forward into Carline. Mandeville holding back this time. Back to experienced man of Western in the midfield. Yeah, there's that rotation again. Look, Mandeville's now on the ball with loads of space. Plays the ball forward. Carline gets ahead on it, but Tootle can bring it away for Boston. Elects to go back to Rollins. Looks for the forward ball to Thewlis. Burrow will get there and nick it away from Chesterfield. Now Thewlis moving forward down the right. No players forward with him at the moment. Green making an overlapping run. Thewlis gets tackled and uh, just oh. held on to the ball for too long. As now here come Chesterfield on the attack. It's Maguire with it. Just goes back on the halfway line. Now with Rowley out to the right to Yarny. Still goalless here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, but end-to-end -end football. Plenty of opportunities in this game. Weston picks it up edge of the centre circle. Played out to the left to Maguire once again. Maguire back to Mandeville, looking for an option with a forward pass. Mandeville keeps hold of it. Ball played out wide to the right to Yarny. He's only going back because of the pressure from Joe Leesley for Boston. Still Chesterfield in possession then with Weston once again moving forward. Looks for the 
pass through to Denanga, cut out this time by Tootle for Boston. Garner goes back to Fitzsimmons. He clears it long, out of play. And it will be a uh, Chesterfield throw with about four minutes to go. Yeah, I've been impressed with Chesterfield. I know it's not their full strength squad, but you can see what the new manager is trying to get them to do, and it's, it's, it's good on the eye. And if they play like this, I'm sure they'll start climbing that National League quite quickly. Uh, Boston at, at times in this first half, not so been at full stretch, but certainly they have been stretched. Here comes Chesterfield. Once again, Mandeville, though, not able to keep hold of the ball. Boston going long. Ball held up in the wind. Floro trying to get there. And Boston get themselves a free kick. I think it was Thewlis who was being held back by Weston. And well, yeah, that's just the wind. The that's uh, just the wind. But the ball was bounced and it's, it's gone behind Thewlis. And Weston was so eager to try and get it. As soon as you put your body there and the, and the defenders are trying to get to the ball and you, you push somebody, you can be given a free kick. So that's just the conditions. You can't knock Weston, the Chesterfield player, trying to get to it because he's, he, he was been trying to be aggressive, but the wind just took it behind him. Free kick played forward. Garner heads it towards goal, but too much on the header. Wharton picks it up diabolically with what the uh, Chesterfield manager, James Rowe, called that free kick decision. Ball back with Wharton. Wharton plays the pass forward. Good pass into Weston. Weston sprinting over the halfway line. No Boston challenge at the moment. Looks for the run of Denanga to his right. Sprinting to keep it in play. Ball back with Yarny now to Smith, back out to Yarny. Martin Smith with it once again, right footed ball looking to spread play to the left to Rowley, Rowley now driving towards the edge of the penalty area, Burrow back defending, still Chesterfield in possession as we head towards the half time break, ball played back into the midfield to Smith once again, then to Weston, plays the one two with Smith, good football from the away side, challenge comes in from Tootle, Rollins should be able to clear to the halfway line now, can Burrow win this one, just bounces over him, cleared back by Evans, Tootle did very very well to get something on that, not sure he knew too much about it but it was important he did get that because otherwise it would have been a running on goal for Mandeville, cleared forward by Boston once again, Maguire gets taken out by DeMeo, free kick Chesterfield but going back to that Tootle clearance he, he seems to just hang his leg in the <laughs> air and luckily the ball stuck to his feet like a magnet Yeah, Chesterfield asking some real questions now of the defensive shape of Bossy United you know, their, their movement Chesterfield's is really good and it's about concentration for Boston when Chesterfield get themselves in that passing frame of mind where the, the rotation's good, they're able to change it from side to side like they did there it's all about concentration, they're staying with runners keeping your defensive shape, a bit of communication. You know, the, the Chesterfield have played some good stuff in this first half. Free kick played short to Mandeville, back out to Smith. Smith plays the ball into the box, it's flicked towards goal, wind catches it and it goes behind for a goal kick as we are about to see how many minutes of added time. Looks like there's going to be one minute of added time shown by the uh, fourth official in this opening 45 minutes the uh, Chesterfield manager James Rowe already starting to make his way down the tunnel a la Jose Mourinho and uh, well for Boston United a pretty satisfactory 45 minutes but still plenty of time for either of these side in the second half to go on and win this game and face Aldershot in the next round the ball is held up for the one minute goal kick goes straight out of play from Fitzsimmons Ball with Maguire for the throw into Mandeville, stolen away by Tootle once again. Now DiMeo on the halfway line, keeping hold of the ball for Boston. Mandeville with him, back with Garner. Garner has it to Leesley. Leesley forward into Green. Green takes too long over the ball, gets dispossessed. And now maybe one last chance for Chesterfield before the break. It's Smith breaking forward in the midfield. Plays the ball out wide to the left to Mandeville. And the wind is just taking that one. Uh, Mandeville takes the corner flag out. And it will be a throw. Yeah, boss, boss, you know, I just take this thing out of the game now. It's 2-2 two, two, if I was him. I would be taking as long as I possibly can without getting booked. Just throw in. Boston United have, have done well this first half. They've been competitive. They created one or two half chances. Chesterfield have had the better chances. 
have looked the more accomplished side, shall we say. But certainly, Boston United are in this game. And there we go, there is the half-time whistle here. It is Boston United nil, Chesterfield nil. Best Welcome back to the second half for Boston United against Chesterfield. Commentary for you here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Uh, we have had a change uh, at the break. We'll bring you that news about the change in a second or two as uh, Boston move forward early on. It is with Jordan Thewlis. Looks to play the pass forward and then Mandeville is taken down and the change at halftime sees uh, Asante come on for Chesterfield, Mark, uh, and he's on for Denanga. Yeah. Santi would surprise. Obviously, I thought Tom Denton and he would start, but obviously James Rowe decided he was going to rotate the squad. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see him play. Obviously, he's still in, he's, he's still one of the top goal scorers in the uh, National League North, having come, having come from Gloucester. So it's uh, it's going to be an interesting interesting change, and I'm sure that's the sign that James Rowe doesn't really want it to go to penalties. He wants to try and win this game. But it's going to be interesting. Boston with the with the with the win this half, so it's going to be a different test for both teams in terms of how they set up and how they play. So again, an interesting 45 minutes coming up now. Yeah, I've got an a, an Asante fact for you in a bit. Okay. A link with Boston United. I'll tell you about that in a bit as Boston coming forward with Jordan Thewlis out wide to Rollins, looks to dig the cross out and gets way too much on it, which gives us time while the ball's being retrieved to tell you my Asante fact. Let's go for it. Are you ready for this? Yep. Uh, so he had a spell at Tamworth okay. uh, in his career. Uh, and at the time, he then moved on to Chester. Mm -hmm. uh, the man who was in charge, who uh, let him go from Tamworth to Chester, or who uh, was in charge of Tamworth when the move happened, was former Boston United manager Dennis Green. There's a fact. There you go. No more fascinating facts between now and time. I've run out. That's my one for the day. As Boston try and win it back. Oh, DeMeo, he was <laughs> entitled to go for the challenge there on Hollis. I don't think there's going to be a booking for this one, but uh, it was one of those where, as a player, you could see it. You could see the uh, the op opening lighting up, couldn't you, for DeMeo? He knew if he got that tackle right, Boston would have been in on goal. Yeah. It's one of them, it's, it's, a, it's a late one, but you can see what he was trying to do, but he'd be lucky to escape a book in here, and I think the Chesterfield players are just saying, well, hang on a minute, you know, uh, you, know you only got booked for booked for something very similar in the first half, and he's got a way with one there, DeMeo. Yeah, Yarny, the only uh, only booking in this game so far, and that was <laughs> opening two minutes, wasn't it? Yes. One ball forward, and here is Yarny trying to get on it into the penalty area, Yarny comes fighting for it, Oh, it's gone all the way across goal, and it, in fact, it has gone out. And that just shows the strength of the win, because that looked like it had gone miles out of play, and then it curled in and nearly a tap in for a Santi at the far post. Yeah, I, I, just, I was just watching Yarny <laughs> chase it, and I'm thinking, is he going to catch it? And Joe Leasley did really well just to try and put him off. He just got side by side with Yarny, and just about did enough to stop him getting a, a purchase on the ball. But like you say, he's actually hooked it from behind the line, and it's ended up almost going in the goal. One of them, one of them, if it was a snooker, it would have been called a trick shot. Absolutely fascinating, but thankfully for Boston United, it actually went out of play. Ball with Shields, plays it forward, Rollins can't get it, goes straight out of play. Yeah, it would have been a, a trick shot John Virgo would have been proud of. Ball with uh, Chesterfield at the moment in the uh, left-back position. We're just three and a half minutes into this second half, it is still... Boston nil, Chesterfield nil. If you are just joining us here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire, DeMeo with it. Been a very good game though. This it's been a nil nil, which has been really entertaining in that first 45 minutes. It's always a sign, I think, Mark, when a, a game flies by, and certainly this game is at the moment. Boston with it with Burrow looks to let off, lay it off to Green. He plays it just behind Rollins. It's gone out of play. It will be a Boston United throw. Carline pleads his innocence as it came off the Boston man, but. Pilgrims will have this chance to get the ball into the box. Rollins will take the throw. Just wants an option. Green breaking free. Instead, it goes to DeMeo to the byline. DeMeo looks to get the cross in. And Boston will have what is only their second corner of the evening. Yeah, 
good play down the right hand side initially from Jordan Burrow to Paul Green Paul Green just played it behind Tutu I think it was or Jay Rollins and they managed to get away with that a little bit Boston but now they've got themselves a corner so Joe Leasley can he stick this under the bar for the young goalkeeper corner does come in it's towards the far post is a header and it is into the back of the net and Boston United have taken the lead and it's Scott Garner the man who nods it in at the far post just as I was saying the young goalkeeper didn't claim it and Scott Garner likes to score goals to Scott Garner doesn't he just heads it in the far post a bit of disappointment you can see on Chesterfield but Boss United it's a really good tonic for the first uh, first first period of this second half get the noses in front now it's all for Chesterfield to do but unfortunately it's a young goalkeeper who just got sucked under the ball the wind took it past him and Scott Garner just headed into the empty net so good for Garner seen him score many goals like that over the years for Boston United free header at the far post gives the Pilgrims a 1-0 lead and as things stand heading through to face Aldershot in round five of the uh, competition great run for Boston this if things can continue so what will Chesterfield do now big game for them this weekend against Wrexham in the National League two of the former football league clubs battling it out to escape if that game goes ahead of course with the yeah, National League funding decision or discussions happening over the next few days ball is with Paul Green he gets taken out in the centre circle and wins Boston a free kick Boston have started this second half very bright though haven't they apart from that early run in the opening minute wasn't it from Yarny apart from that it's been all Boston United yeah the winds just helped him a little bit get on the front foot here a couple of long balls and he's put Chesterfield on their back foot you could say a good bit of play down the right hand side that caused the corner and the young goalkeeper just got sucked under the ball and didn't. Leasley plays it forward. Burrow knocks it down in the penalty area. Easy gather for Dylan Wharton. Looks to bowl it out to the right to Yarny. Ball stays in play. Leasley plays it back where it came from. And it'll go behind for a goal kick here. So Boston leading 1 0. Scott Garner's goal in the 50th minute. Yeah, difference. brilliant for Boston, the goal. Chesterfield will be disappointed in the way it was conceded, but certainly Boston, that's just given them the, like I say, put their noses, noses in front of this tie and not so they can relax. Of course they can't relax, because Chesterfield have already proven that you know, they can cause Boston problems. But it's, it's now for, for Chesterfield to chase the game a little bit, which may open it up for Jordan Foolish and Coke to catch Chesterfield on the break. Ball hits the away dugout. James Rose come out now. He's, he's probably a little bit disappointed. He's, his players' reaction as well from the goal. They've just been, you can just see they're just a little bit, the goal's just knocked him a little bit. So they're, they're, they'll have to recover in Boston. Hopefully, if they, if, I mean, if they can get another goal now, that surely you would think really knock the stuffing out of Chesterfield. Leasley with the throw. Burrow goes up to try and win it. Cleared away by the away side. And then, oh, he's kicked the ball away here. Yarny has to be careful. He'd dragged, I think it was Connor De Mayo down. And, uh, well, Yarny certainly is having to be careful I here mean, because I mean that was a silly. That was silly kicking the ball away, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, other referees would. You're just giving referees decisions to make. And sometimes with referees, you just don't know what decisions they are going to make. So, free kick for Boston. Thanodge plays it in. Couple of players go down in the penalty area. Two Chesterfield, one Boston. Shields was the man who went down for Boston. Maguire went down for Chesterfield. I think Weston was also involved in that pile of players on the floor. Leasley with it. Looks to play it forward. Can't do so. Ball back with Yarny. Finds Asante. First chance we've seen of him to maybe run at the Boston defence, but Shields deals with him very well ball back with Fitzsimmons clears yeah. it long Boro yeah, can't Luke win Shields the header does. sorry Rob yeah, Luke Shields does brilliantly down there it's anti the first time he's really had the ball down the channel you expect him to run but Luke Shields knew exactly what he was going to do Green does well to win the ball back off Smith then finds the pass into DeMeo two Chesterfield players in on him and Boston get themselves a free kick and again a little bit soft I thought I thought both players came towards DeMeo I've got a toe on the ball, but clearly the referee thought differently. A little bit of a soft one. He's impressive. Kind of made the referee's decision by going to ground, but 
He's impressed it again though tonight, isn't he, De Mayo? It's 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 one of the frustrations I think, Corey, this season, isn't it? The the fact he's just not been able to hold down a regular place in the team because every time he comes in, he just looks such a talent in that midfield yeah. and feel like in a game where it, it needs someone to unlock a defence as the ball flops forward from Boston goes straight out of play he's the kind of player who can unlock a defence just in a split second yeah he takes he takes the ball in, in good on a half turn and it's just a shame he hasn't got half a yard of pace really you know a bit more pace because he's, his first touch is normally generally really good if the ball's rattled into him and it's just a shame he hasn't got that explosive pace off the mark because well if he did he probably wouldn't be playing for Boston United let's be honest because technically he's a very very good player we saw that when he was at Stockport, you know, he, he's, he's just that technically gifted player, but just lack that yard of pace once he gets on that half turn to really hurt teams. And like you say, Rob, he just needs a run in the team for me, a starting, a starting place where he can have 10 games and really get himself fit, really get himself firing. Oh, good play from DeMeo, sets Boston off once again. DeMeo races forward, finds Burrow, lays it back just uh, ahead of Paul Green, but Green will help it out to the right to Rollins. Rollins gets dispossessed. Now maybe Chesterfield can go on the attack. Green stops it. But it will be a uh, Chesterfield throw 10 minutes into this uh, second half. And uh, they're about to make a, another change. It's going to be McCourt. Jack McCourt coming on, number 17. Very shortly. As Boston win themselves a throw. Yeah, great get down the right. Jay Rollins there. He read what the throw was going to be. Picked the pocket of the Chesterfield player and then played it off the Chesterfield player to get a throw in. So good play from Jay Rollins on the front foot, which is what you need in these conditions. Try and pin, the, pin Chesterfield back in that half. Against this win, it's very difficult to get out. Throw for Boston to be taken by Rollins. Looping throw into the penalty area, cleared away by Hollis. Retrieved by Thanon, just helps it back to Shields, who goes all the way back to his goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. Plenty of time for him to play the ball long. Burrow will go up to win the header. Burrow goes down and wins a free kick. Yeah, again, starting position for Chesterfield. The bit starting position was too deep. I think it's Evans there. The skipper has had to come through the back of Jordan Burrow. Again, it's so important your starting position is a back four when you're playing against the win, as they are at the moment, because you've either got to set a really high line, Rob, so you then, uh, then let the ball roll through to the goalkeeper, or you set yourself you know, a, a deeper, deeper position, but then be a be able to then come in front of the player and be brave and unfortunately Evans didn't do either of that and that's where John Burrow took up a good position and, and he, he got fouled. Martin Smith coming off for Chesterfield on will come on uh, on will come Jack McCourt on will come on. <laughs> Cold. Is, yeah. Cold Rob. Hat and, hat and gloves for you. They are all ready to go yeah. All lovely cup of coffee at half time. Just really worried I'm going to knock this cup thanks off to, at some point. Mr. Unwin. Simon Unwin, who's the uh, police and safety officer here. Free kick from Than is just wide of the post. Yeah, I'm worried it was going to go flying, so I've moved it into a safer spot because I know what I'm like with Right next to the things. equipment. <laughs> well, yeah, but I feel it's like wedged in safely. And because of the, uh, the nature of not having anybody here. Lose with Chesterfield in their own penalty area, played out short from the goal kick oh it's given away it's a chance for Boston oh De Mayo we were talking him up and then he goes and does that he blasts it so high I think that's probably hit the top of the stump oh, I've no words for that he's basically read what the, the center half was going to do and he's picked his pocket he's 18 yards out I think he can even take a touch inside the penalty area he decides to shoot early and gets it horribly wrong I hope they don't rue that because that's the, probably the best chance of the game there I say apart from obviously Scott Garner's goal Borough wins the flick on, oh, it's nearly a mistake between Hollis and his goalkeeper, Wharton, who does come and gather. Fulis was lurking. Now maybe Chesterfield with a chance to come forward. First chance in this second half, maybe to see Chesterfield come forward again. Garner's in there quick and does well. Thumps the ball long. Much better from Boston, though. It, not that they played badly in the first half, but much better in the second half so far. Yeah, exactly. I, th I just think the goals rocked Chesterfield a little bit. You know, I think... I think it's almost come as a shock to them that you know they've gone behind in this game because they probably did have the better chances. You know, you just got to make sure they keep keep them, keep them at bay, really, Chesterfield and Boston. Just again, just take their chances and just be solid as a unit. And that's a big chance for Conor De Mayo there to make this game probably safe. I would suggest switch of play from Chesterfield from right to left, picked up by Maguire. Boston leading by a goal to nil as we edge towards the hour mark here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. It's ball clipped into the penalty area. Easy gather for Fitzsimmons. Leasley is 
calling after it. Ball bowled out by Fitzsimmons to Leesley. Plays a pass down the line into DeMeo. DeMeo oh, tried to skip past the Chesterfield captain Evans and Fulison made a forward run as well, looking for the pass through, but DeMeo had own ideas. Yeah, he just, it's just a shame Conor DeMeo just couldn't quite see that Fulison made that run. He just had a one touch too many and got tackled by Evans, but again, Again, going into a, a decent game, this is just will come forward. McCourt plays the ball out to the attacking left for the away side. Still, it's with Chesterfield at the moment. Rollins fighting for it. Tootle there as well. It's into Mandeville. Back to Western now. 40 yards out from goal. Plays it to Yarley. Forward run coming from the captain. Evans looks to play the ball into the box. Dulis tries to bring the ball away but gets dispossessed by Mandeville. Western looking to play the 1 2. It's with Rowley now out wide to the left. Ball fizzed across goal. Really good ball. And no players gambling for Chesterfield for a tap in at the far post. It remains Boston 1 Chesterfield 0. It's one of them balls that's almost too good. It was almost, as Sandy was kind of saying to him, it was, it was too good. It was almost in that corridor of uncertainty between the goalkeeper and the back four. But you know, for Asante to probably get on that, he would have had to be offside. He would have had to have stood in an offside position to try and get himself on that. So, I have to say, if, if, if a cross across the goal like that can it ever be too good, that was the one. But a little bit of a letter for Boston United. Just got to make sure if they can get this second goal. You know, Connor DeMay, I'll keep going back to that. You know, a real big chance for him. Tootle. Ball back to Fitzsimmons, poor goal kick from him. This time he gets huge clearance on it, and that's going to bounce, and that could be going in the back of the net. Oh, it's off the bar. Ross Fitzsimmons, so close to scoring for Boston United. Oh, my word. You, you called it as soon as it happened. You just thought if that hits the surface and skids on, the young goalkeeper is in trouble here. It's gone over the top of him, and it's hit the top of the bar. Oh, Newport goalkeeper scored the other night. Yeah, Tom exactly King last night. Exactly the same position, exactly the same scenario. Well, he was claiming it could be a world record. I think Ross Fitzsimmons would have gone and beaten him to it. Yeah. In 20 Chesterfield are rattled a little bit. I mean, that, that, as a team, that would that, that worries you because if you, if you can almost concede a goal from a goalkeeper striking the ball 80 yards down the pitch, it, do, it does kind of put you on the back foot a little bit. And that was, that, it was as soon as he hit it, you could just see, you just knew. knew. It was measured up perfectly for him, and it just rebounded off the bar. Burrow plays it out to the Fulis, just can't keep it in play. And what a, well, what a moment that would have been for Ross Fitzsimmons. <laughs> what a moment that would have been. Right, so as soon as it took off, you just knew if, if Thornton was off his, uh, Orton, sorry, was off his line. Oh, lovely play from Boston into the edge of the penalty area. Leesley tries to get it, plays it out to the left to Fulis. He's onside, Fulis. Comes back inside on his right foot, just slips as he gets the cross in. It's cleared by Chesterfield. Garner will try and head it back towards the Chesterfield goal. And now they're looking to come on the attack. Rollins having to come back and defend. Ball still with Chesterfield at the moment. McCourt, the substitute, plays the ball through. Garner stops it, getting it from Asante, and then clears it whilst lying on the ground. Yarley plays it back in to the edge of the penalty area. Again, cleared away by Boston United. Ball with Andy Thanodge. Thanodge switches it out to the left to Thewlis. Just looking at, at Boston's formation, Mark, looks like maybe they've gone to a, a back three. Tootle joining the, the two centre-halves in Shields and Garner and, and Rollins playing as a, a wing back in Leesley as well. Yeah, I think I think they just changed it slightly I think from the first half. I think they just got the Leesley and Rollins have just gone man for man. So they just made it a little bit harder for, for Chesterfield to get out. And it was that gap again, wasn't it, that Rowley was getting into, that they just shored up there. It's getting a little bit competitive, a little bit feisty down there, which is, which is what we want to see. It's a cup tie at the end of the day. It's been a great one so far. It's been really entertaining, really well-fought contest. Ball with Boston and Leesley. Leesley looks to set Thewlis off down the left. Boston with DeMeo forward, Burrow forward in this attack. Thewlis driving towards the edge of the penalty area. Chips the ball into the box. Burrow looks to lay it off for the shot from Green. It's deflected on the way through. It will be a Boston United corner. Real good hold-up play from Jordan Burrow once again. Still yeah. Boston lead 1-0. Jordan Thewlis is doing well this time. Decision-making was much better from him. 
cut inside. I thought he was going to shoot, and he just dinked it into Jordan Burrow. A little chest down for Paul Green. He got beyond Chesterfield's midfield. Left foot shot, which deflected wide. So good play from Boston United. Can they get that second goal, the all-important second goal, as we edge towards the 65-minute mark? Scott Garner scored from a corner. Can he get another from a corner? Can Boston get another from a corner? In towards the near post this time, headed away, comes out to Green. He has a poor first touch, and it's a chance for Chesterfield to break forward. Thano Jim with a challenge, and it will be a free kick for the away team. Yeah, just an opportunity for Joe Leasley just to stick the ball right on top of the goalkeeper. And he's not done that. And we're going to see a yellow card here for Luke Shields. But, Luke if, Shields. If he's, but my issue with that is if he's pushed the ball away, that's exactly what Yarni did. So what's the difference? Very true. And that's what, as a player, infuriates you. Because the he's not being consistent. If you're going to book Luke Shields for rolling the ball away from that point there to stop Chesterfield taking a quick free kick, why don't you only get second second booking for kicking the ball away? I, I, that infuriates me as a spectator, as a commentator, and as a player. It just oh. Free kick came to nothing, played straight out for a Boston throw in the Premier League at half-time. Fulham 1, Manchester United 1. Lookman giving Fulham the lead. Cavani equalising for Manchester United. Reminder here, it's Boston 1, Chesterfield 0. The winners facing all the shot in the next round as Boston look to get that second. Rollins tried to break through. It will be a Boston United throw. Wide right position in line with the edge of the penalty area as the wind continues to be strong around the uh, Jakeman's Community Stadium this evening. Just glad to have this game on. Of course, the weather causing issues for Boston at the weekend. The game at Alkerton postponed because of a waterlogged pitch. Lincoln had their game off last night because of a waterlogged pitch and the weather that was due in the county. I think there's real concerns this game might not go ahead and it might have to have been played tomorrow night. Otherwise, both teams would have been out from the competition due to the FA rules. Well, I, I didn't know that. Yep, so if there's a floodlight failure, we're back here tomorrow. If well, anything don't like start. Kettering. There was a Kettering <laughs> Leamington <laughs> game last night. If, if anybody's listening and has, doesn't know about that, just go on social media and have a look and see what went on with that. If you're a Boston United fan, I would be asking, well, how come the FA decided they wanted to play that game through to an end, yet we have to go all the way back up to Darlington for three minutes? Thielis plays the ball into the box. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's more what that game didn't have on uh, last night. It's uh, one you can read about on the BBC Sport website. Paul Cox, the Kettery manager, has had his say on what occurred last night. Yeah, I know Paul, I've played with him at Kettering years and years ago. He was always competitive, but he spoke a lot of sense. He's a bit baffled as to why the decision was made as it was. So, yeah, just just a strange evening by the sound of things. DeMeo tries to poke the ball through to Thewlis. It's with Yarni. Forward pass into Rowley. Good turn from him. Rowley looking for options. Plays it back to McCourt. 35 yards out from goal central. Back to... Weston out wide to the attacking left now to Maguire finds Asante who's been quiet so far Asante has Tootle with him Asante tries to get the cross into the box cleared away by Shields Thewlis claims he's being held back there by Evans yeah, he's not going to get anything for that Jordan Thewlis Evans just stood his ground and now Evans in a bit of space moving forward is he going to line up the shot Evans from centre half moves forward looks for Yarley on the right. Good cross in from Yarley. In fact, it's over here. At first, it looked like it was a wonderful ball and then two over hit, but still, it's with Chesterfield. Maguire now with the cross into the box towards the far post. Evans was up from centre half. Puts it wide of the post. Decent opportunity once again for the away team. It remains Boston, though, with a goal to nil lead. Yeah, wind affecting Yarley's first cross and then the second cross was a bit better. Thankfully, it fell to a centre half who his technique, Willis was not, not particularly good, shall we say. His right foot volley harmlessly wide. But Boston will just want this second goal. They've been on top in this second half. I think the conditions have helped that. We're going to see just, a just do that second goal now. Third and final Chesterfield change very shortly as Fitzsimmons with the goal kick again goes forward. Easy into the arms of Wharton this time. We've had Ross Fitzsimmons, the Boston United goalkeeper, hit the bar in this second half. That's how strong the wind is. 
ball with Rollins. Well played from Rollins, finds De Mayo. De Mayo has runners to his right and to his left. De Mayo into the edge of the penalty area, just gets dispossessed at the vital time. And now Chesterfield looking to go on the attack and Boston will need to get back and defend here. Good defending from Leesley, just takes Mandeville out, but Mandeville running away with the ball, still going towards the byline, Mandeville gets the cross in, cleared away by Boston. It's back with Yarley now for Chesterfield and into McCourt. McCourt tries to get the ball in. Swirl on that, finds Asante, goes for the shot and it's behind for a goal kick. Yeah, McCourt with a, a cross that if it wasn't for the wind, the barrier falls down in front of us. If it wasn't for the wind, it would have gone clear over the goal, but he's just bent it and Asante with a good first touch, but I have to credit Tutil, the right back for Boston United. He got back and just managed to, to put the centre forward off. So it, Chesterfield's still looking dangerous. I keep saying it, Boston need this second goal. Goal kick for Fitzsimmons. We've got 20 minutes plus added time remaining. Scott Garner's goal the difference so far. Fitzsimmons with the goal kick. Oh, it's going to all the run all the way through to Thewlis. Wide right position. Burrow in the penalty area. If you can find him, Thewlis win Boston a corner. And that was just misjudged by Evans at the back. Yeah, he could have just let that run through. I think, I think he lost where Jordan Thewlis was. And it ended up, his touch ended up making it a, a good pass for Jordan Thewlis to get on the end of. Now, Joe Leesley, you've got a, a corner from the same side that you scored from with Scott Garner. Stick it right on top of the goalkeeper. Don't feel sorry for him. Stick it right on top of him. See if he can deal with this wind and the pace of the ball. Corner comes in for Boston. Again, it's towards the far post. Oh, he's nearly gone straight in. The goalkeeper getting a touch on it. And it's behind for another corner. Yeah, just as I said, he did exactly what I said. And it caused Wharton all sorts of problems. I fancy Joe Leesley to score from that side at some point. He could do if he puts enough pace on it. I think he could deceive the young goalkeeper and go in. Danoj now with a right-footed in-swinging corner again. It's curled towards the far post. Oh, Garner was close. And it's behind for a goal kick. We're going to see Tom Whelan come on for Chesterfield before this goal kick's taken. He's going to come on for Liam Mandeville. So Mandeville coming off, Whelan coming on. Final change, final throw of the dice for Chesterfield and their manager, James Rowe. Boston still yet to make a change. And, uh, well, we're about ready then for what is going to be final 18 minutes once this goal kick gets back underway here at the Jakeman. Boston leading 1-0. Scott Garner's goal, header at the far post. The difference in this FA Trophy tie. Mark. Yeah, Whelan, normally a starter for Chesterfield, and he's been getting rave reviews since he signed from Weymouth. So, again, Andy Thanos has gone to kind of pick him up. He looks like he's going to play in that number 10 role. So, again, James Rowe. Needs to get something from this game, obviously. Oh, long ball forward from Fitzsimmons. Thewlis tries to get there, and it's just in the hands of the goalkeeper, Wharton. Ross Fitzsimmons turning into the playmaker for Boston United <laughs> from goalkeeper at the moment. He is. That's a two, three great quality through balls, 80-yard through balls. Only because Chesterfield sent her out. So just not dealing with that long ball, and they've really struggled. I thought Luke Shields and Scott Garner did quite well in the first half for Boston dealing with it. But certainly... Oh, the goal where the defender, Evans, has missed it, and well, just as I said, all sorts of issues, aren't they, with the win Chesterfield's back line at the moment? Yeah, like I say, it's, it's difficult as a centre half. It's horrible to play in these kind of conditions because you, all you want to do is go and ahead it and win it, and, and it just it, it almost it almost dissolves your confidence about what you what, what you stand for in terms of heading ability because you normally on normal a placid day you just go and head the ball, you go and attack it, but the wind just makes you really uncertain of, of what you're doing and. Like I say, Willis and, and the other centre halves have really struggled for Chesterfield in this second half. We're going to see the return of Jake Wright for Boston United. Set to come on in a second or two. Burrow flicks it forward. Be interesting to see who Wright comes on for. Well, it's going to be a straight so swap for Thewlis up front. Green with it for Boston in the midfield. Goes back to the goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. Long ball forward again from the goalkeeper. And it's going to go all the way through to his opposite number. Morton, difficult evening for the youngster so far. Yeah, we're just talking to the Chesterfield press, wasn't it? It's kind of his, his debut for, for Chesterfield as a young lad. He's not played in the first team other than a pre-season friendly. Here comes Rowley, had some great chances in the opening 45 minutes. Plays it out 
to the attacking left for Chesterfield. Cross into the box. Fitzsimmons gets a punch in front of Asante. Comes back out to Yarley. Oh, that is a really important block from Joe Leesley because that was flying towards the top corner. Yeah, Yarley really struck that well. Joe Leesley with an absolutely fantastic block. And the two exchange a little fist pump because great strike and fantastic defending from Joe Leesley. Put his body on the line there. Great block. Like I say, if it hadn't been that block, I'm not sure where that would have gone, but it was struck with such venom. Last 15 minutes and Chesterfield corner played in. It's headed towards goal and it is headed into the back of the net. And it's Hollis who scores the equaliser. It is 1-1. Oh, that's such a soft goal to concede for Boston. Nobody at the near post. And Hollis just gets a run, goes across the front man and just helps it on its way. And it ends up in the back of the net. That's a disappointing goal to concede from Boston United's point of view. It was easy, wasn't it? It was a really good header, wasn't it? It was Hollis. a good header. He just, he just used the pace of the ball. He just uh, redirected the ball. The pace was on the corner. He just redirected it. And then it gave Ross Fitzsimons absolutely no chance. He nestled in that far corner. Jordan Thewis off. Jake Wright on for Boston. I said Boston needed that second goal. They definitely need a second goal now. So, 1-1 one, one here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Chesterfield equalising through Hollis. Can Boston go and take the lead once again? Ball with Leesley. Leesley about to take the throw. Gets the ball back off Di Maio. Leesley looks to go past Yarley. And the ball will go out of play for a goal kick. Of course, Boston in the previous round beating Fylde on penalties. Yeah, of experience. I, th I think you know, Chesterfield will, be, will feel that the first half performance they deserve to be level. They've not been great the second half, but they've got themselves back in this. Tootle takes it down well, goes back to the goalkeeper Fitzsimmons again. Long clearance from Fitzsimmons, but this time it's low. And oh, the goalkeeper slips as he goes to catch it. And I thought I was going to go out of play for a corner there. Did well to recover Wharton. Wharton with the forward ball. Boston trying to win it with Rollins. Rollins gets taken out but advantage has been played. Good forward ball from Thanoj. Is Leesley going to be able to get there? No, just too much on the pass and it's a goal kick. Yeah, great run from Joe Leesley. Yarni didn't really spot it. Thanoj just played it with the outside of his right foot in behind Yarni. It's only the wind that's taken it out. Otherwise Joe Leesley would have been in behind Yarni and Chesterfield's defence and that would have been dangerous. It's just the wind that's taken it. Here is the goal scorer, Hollis, for Chesterfield. One all here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. Santi looks to play the ball through. Really important block from Garner. Burrow now takes it down for Boston. Can't get the ball under control. Now Chesterfield looking the stronger side since that goal. Santi out wide on the left. Back in midfield for Weston. Wright tries to get there. Weston keeps hold of possession. Still it's with Weston, right blocking off the forward pass. Evans finds Maguire. Bit of space for Maguire to move into. Maguire moving forward. No challenge on him at the moment. Maguire, oh, Jake Wright. Important challenge there. Stop him getting through, but it's still Maguire, and then he loses the ball. But Jake Wright having to chase back there, Mark, to, to get hold of that ball. Yeah, definitely just track the, the left-sided centre-half. He's had to track him all the way in, so that's good play from Jake Wright. Could have easily just let him run, but decided he needed to go with him. And defensively, that was a good decision. He got a tackling right at the right time. Too much on the kick from Fitzsimmons. And again, the goalkeeper is handling there. Yeah, he just looks nervous. Just looks like it's, uh, put it bluntly, a little bit beyond him, dare I say. Ball played forward now for Rowley. Rowley moving forward into the edge of the penalty area. Rowley goes into the box. Looks to get it back on his right foot, plays it out to McCourt. McCourt now into the box, goes past Leesley and overruns it. And it is going to be a goal kick. Yeah, there's Rowley again. He's just come back into life, hasn't he? First half, I thought he was excellent. And there, he's just drifted past a couple of players. And I think he played the wrong option. I think Asante's made a great little duck back run behind Scott Garner. And I think if Rowley had seen that and just reversed the ball, Asante would have been in. Thankfully, McCourt. For Boston, just ran it out of play. So another dangerous attack comes to nothing for Chesterfield. Boston just got to be careful here. 
to become a little bit more even with that goal for Chesterfield. That's just literally come off McCourt's head and just flown five yards off the byline. Again, the wind just playing a part in this game. Boston with the advantage of the wind in this second half. Ten minutes to go. Boston won Chesterfield one. Long throw for Leesley to put into the penalty area. Leesley throws it in. Goes over everybody's head. The goalkeeper comes with a punch, completely misses it. It's a scramble, but Chesterfield get it away. It's now with Green, wide right position. Green back to Tootle. Forward pass for DeMeo now. Can he get across into the box? It was kept in play by Rowley for Chesterfield. Now they should be able to clear it, which they do. Ballard gets a nudge in the back. Easy decision for the free kick to be given. Boston's way. Yeah, Whelan this time just on Andy Thanodge. Again, the wind just played a part in that. It just held up. Whelan thought he was going to go over the top of Andy Thanodge's head. And Andy Thanodge just stood his ground. The wind, the ball dropped on the wind, and Whelan just had to go through the back of him to try and compete. So a chance now for Joe Leesley to put this right on the money. With this wind, if he puts it in towards goal. Leesley does put it in towards goal. It's headed away, though, by Chesterfield. Picked up by... Green once again, back to Thanodge. Thanodge chips the ball over the top, looking for the run of right. It's cleared away by Chesterfield. This game really starting to open up, and it's Chesterfield with Rowley looking to play it forward for Asante. Thanodge back defending, cuts that one out, and then looks for the first time ball over the top into Jake Wright, who's offside. Yeah, that was a, that would have been close. And Thanodge with a great bit of almost centre half play, really. You read what Asante where the run was going to go. Asante's run. Andy Thanos picked it up and nearly clipped a fantastic ball in behind for Jake Wright. Long ball forward from Leesley goes over the head of Boro. Hollis goes to knock it back. The confidence in where his goalkeeper was there. You just, th you just think any point a player is going to make a mistake here, it's going to cost them the game. It just feels like that. Weston with it. Now with the goal scorer, Hollis. To his right is the Skipper Evans, Boston about to make another change. Scott Duxbury is the man who's going to be coming on. Ball with Chesterfield and with Hollis again. Tootle comes in to take that one out, does well. He's the worst off though. And uh, will be a Boston, well in fact the referee just blown to stop playing. It's a 50-50 challenge, Mark. Nothing wrong with the challenge no. at all. It's just the, the ferocity, I think, that caused Tootle a problem. Yeah, it's a 50-50 challenge. And Tootle just come off the little bit worse that. It's just like he might have opened his groin up or his shoulder up or something like that. It just fell a little bit awkwardly and then came down with a little bit of a thump from that challenge. No malice from it. Good, good old-fashioned 50-50 challenge. I have to say the game's been played in a, a reasonable spirit. It's been competitive, don't get me wrong. I think it's been it's been one of the best games this season. I think for yeah. just the, the you know p two teams going at it, not playing dirty, playing some good stuff along the way as well, and 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 both obviously showing the the want and the fight to get through to face Aldershot. Yeah, it's been a really good game. I've really enjoyed it. Just as Willis the skipper, a few fist pumps from. It's just it's just been played in a, in a good spirit, but a competitive spirit. How the game should be played. There's been no aftermath. There's been no, you know, really horrible incidents to talk about in terms of players squaring up to each other. It's just been playing a good spirit in a, in, a, in a competitive way, which is what we want. So it will be a drop ball. Ball with Evans with six and a half minutes remaining of the 90. As things stand, we're heading to a penalty shootout unless either of these sides can find the breakthrough. Maguire plays the pass forward to Asante, back to goal. Left-hand corner of the penalty area. C takes the cross into the box, decent ball, headed away by Leesley for Boston. McCourt gets it. McCourt looks to play it forward to Whelan. Back out to Yarny. Whelan tries to get it back once again. Three Boston players around in green. Going into a cul-de-sac here, needs to get his team out. Well, makes a meal of that. And it will be a Chesterfield throw. Yeah, I think Paul Green was trying to play it off Whelan. 
couldn't quite get the angle to do it. So in the end, just made it a safe clearance and just put it out of play. This is going to be a long throw now. So again, Boss United get organised very, very quickly. Get many front. Paul Green pin, pin your man in front there. Joe Leesley and Yarnick. Long throw coming in then from Carline. Decent ball in, headed away by Leesley for Boston. Thanos chasing after Whelan. And he goes back to Weston, the deepest man back for Chesterfield, apart from his goalkeeper. Wharton, who now has the ball. Wharton skews his clearance forward. It's flicked on, though, by Evans. Ball out of play for a Boston United throw. Here we are going to see that change then. Interesting to see what this will do for Boston's formation. Yeah. And it's going to be Leesley who comes off. I'm a little bit surprised by that. I have to say, Joe Leesley and Yarni have had a real good battle. Yes. Neither, neither of them have come out on top, really. I think it's been 50 50 between the pair of them. And the intriguing thing battle. is, is you put Leesley down as a penalty taker. Well, I, I was thinking that as well. I'm surprised he's not, he's not still on the pitch for those penalties. Keeper comes and gathers for Chesterfield. It's Boston having to defend once again as Chesterfield mounts another attack with four minutes to go. Ball with Carline, goes back to the goalkeeper, Wharton. So Duxbury on it, left wing back for Boston. Made two of their three changes. Ball straight out of play for a uh, throw for Boston. Still Peter Cook, the goalkeeper, Tyrell Warren, Terry Hawkridge, Mitch Rose and Fraser Preston available for the Boston manager and the goalkeeper here has gone down, Wharton. Yeah, we'll see what happens. He, he struck the ball and he, he is immediately went down. That's his calf, and either that's cramp or he's pulled his calf. Like I say, he's a young goalkeeper and he's probably not used to the amount of kicking and the movement he's had to do in this game if he's not played a lot. And I don't know if they've got a substitute goalkeeper, so that could be interesting. I think. James Rose had a little bit of a laugh with his bench, so... Well, he's not in, they've not even got a substitute. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> of course. I hadn't, th I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> so, well, we could... <laughs> James Rose just having a little bit of a giggle to himself, thinking, well, <laughs> this, this could be entertaining, because if that's cramp, I mean, how's he... You know, he's, uh, he's stretching it out now. It looks like he might be OK. Uh, we were told Will, uh, right, Will yeah. Evans would Will go Evans in goal. Will Evans would go in goal, the skipper. Looks like he's going to be Thanks all right to, to continue. Just a few media people in front of us. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's going to be okay. But, well, another, <laughs> another moment of drama here, isn't there? <laughs> I can see the uh, kit man getting the, the spare goalkeeping shirt ready just in case yep. <laughs> it's needed. So Boston wants to try and test his movement now, won't they? Well, it's what you try and need to do. Boston haven't done that for the last few minutes. Ball to Duxbury in the centre circle. Plays it out to the left, looking for the runner, DeMeo. It's gone out of play for a Chesterfield throw. Two minutes plus added time remaining. Boston 1, Chesterfield 1 here on BBC Radio Lincolnshire. From yeah, Mayfield, Smart, Coney, Commerce team. Connor DeMeo just looked a little bit sluggish there. He's, to be fair to him, he's worked hard in this game. He just lacked a little bit of energy just to try and get on that ball from, from Paul Green. DeMeo. Wins the tackle, but it will be another Chesterfield throw. Final few minutes of this game. Both sides going to settle for a penalty shootout. Boston beat in file last time in the shootout in the last round of the competition. Ball is with Duxbury. Looks to play it forward. Not a great ball, though, from the left back. Cleared forward to roll in. Now maybe a chance for Chesterfield on the attack. Garner blocks off Asante and then Asante pulls Garner back, but the linesman doesn't flag. Duxbury getting back to defend against Asante. He gets a good cross in and it's headed behind for Tootle by Tootle for a Chesterfield corner. Yeah, Duxbury just tried to use his strength and body weight, but Asante's just as strong. And Asante was able to get the cross in. And I thought it was a I thought it was a pullback on Scott Garner, I have to say, initially from Asante, but the referee didn't see it, the linesman was right in front of it, didn't give it. So again, for Boston United need to defend this corner well. No free headers. Make it as difficult as you can for your opponents to not to get a free header. Chesterfield scored from their previous corner. Just having a bit of trouble stopping the ball moving in the uh, wind. 
We're into the last minute, and it's going to be McCourt over this right-footed out swing. No, it's not. We're having to wait for the, <laughs> the ball's gone walkies. McCourt having to put a little divot in the pitch. To yeah. It's just, it's just in that area, isn't it? Just in that corner where there's no cover. So McCourt with this corner. Plays it in again towards the near post. Flicks all the way across goal. Garner heads it away. It's out for another corner. Yeah, Santi nearly didn't get on it. He thought he was going to, but it just, I think the bounce deceived him. But again, a dangerous ball into the area. And Grossen didn't deal with it. And they're going to So, another corner set to come in. We're about to get how many minutes of added time there will be as well. Corner then, right footed in swinger for Chesterfield. Comes in again towards the near post. Cleared away by Boston, only partially further cleared by Thanodge. Right now, chasing after it for Boston. Whelan plays it out for Maguire on the left. Maguire's cross is blocked by Garner. Right fighting for it with Whelan. Can't win the ball. Two minutes of added time. And what is entertaining, I always find, is since we've had no crowds, the time of added on at the end of games seems to be less and less. <laughs> for nobody to boo. I can't, what game was I at this year and there was no minutes of added time in the second half? Which I don't think I've ever experienced before. Boston, are they going to make another change? Looks like they are. I assume with penalties in mind. Garner plays the ball forward. And that's going Fingers to go out. That goes right in that bottom corner. Right. Row it is, yeah. Yeah, Scott Garner didn't really have anything in his head as to what he was going to do, so just clip the ball into the, the corner. And it is Terry Hawkridge coming on. Yeah, he's obviously a penalty taker. No pressure, Terry. You're coming on for just penalties, though, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> and he's coming don't on miss. for Jay Rollins. Yeah, don't miss. Well, it's one of those where his only touch could be a penalty. Yeah, it could be. So Rollins off, Hawkridge on. Yeah, Jay Rollins has had a good evening. He's done quite well. Looks like he's just limping a little bit. Hopefully that's nothing too serious. I think he's got a good game, Joe Rollins. He worked hard up and down the, that right wing. Hawkridge will get one touch. He'll get to take the throw, I think. Well, no, it's a Chesterfield throw. We'll get to defend the throw, I should say. I was going to say, he didn't come on for Chesterfield. <laughs> <laughs> Getting cold. Uh, ball's thrown straight out, so we will get to take the throw. Yeah, there we might go. We'll take it because the lad just thrown it straight out. I think Tootle's going to take it instead. I thought I would. Yeah, thought I predicted the future there, but no. Might just get it into the box. It is a, a link, uh, Boston throw. Ball forward by Tootle, headed away by Chesterfield. Back to Tootle. He gets dispossessed. Is there one last chance in this game? No, there isn't. And so here we go again. We are heading to a penalty shootout in the FA Trophy to decide who will travel to all the shot in round number five. Yeah, I should close my notebook down. I don't need that. This is this is down to penalties. Yeah, probably a, probably a fair result. I would suggest. I think Chesterfield edged it in the first half. I think Boston edged it in the second half. And it's now down to the penalty shootout. So it becomes a little bit of a lottery. But Boston can draw on their experience from beating Fylde last time round. And the way it works for the goalkeepers is that they've a few shaky moments still in Wharton, but he could become the, the hero for Chesterfield now. He could be, yeah. Uh, strange how football works sometimes, doesn't it? They just miss them really them chances, don't they? DeMayo with that really good chance. And then Fitzsimons with a extraordinary long clearance that bounced and went over Wharton, the goalkeeper for Chesterfield, and bounced on top of the crossbar. It all comes down to a penalty shootout then. I have to say, it's been a really good, entertaining it's game. It's been a great game, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really been a really game. good game in, in atrocious conditions to play football in, let's be honest. It is down to the lottery of a penalty shootout to decide who goes through. Now, last round, Scott Gardner didn't admit to the manager that he'd missed his penalty for four for Boston and scored the winner, <laughs> which the manager didn't know until we told him after the game. Now, whether he trusts Scott Garner again... Well, Craig, get it, do your homework, <laughs> that's all I'd say. I mean, looking at the penalty takers, you'd go Jake Wright, uh, obviously, as a, a penalty taker, Jordan Burrow as a penalty taker, uh, Thanage de Mayo, that's, your f that's four of your five, isn't it? It's who's the fifth? It Hawkridge, obviously, has just come on, so yeah, I imagine that's imagine your five, isn't him. it? And then... 
interesting, isn't it? Because you've got Paul Green experienced man. He would have been in this situation before. I'm sure he's a, an option. Then you probably go towards your, your Tootle Shields, Garner, Duxbury as your, your final few, don't you? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I always think it's interesting to see who's your first penalty taker and who's the fifth penalty taker if it gets to that stage. Do you, do you put your best penalty takers on first just to make sure you keep yourself in it? Or do you wait for the fifth penalty for your best penalty taker? It's always a little bit of cat and mouse, this, on your list. So we are going to have the penalties to the left of us. In what will be the home end when supporters are allowed back in or allowed into the uh, Jakemans Community Stadium. And not, it looks sure, like not sure we can call it the town end anymore, can we? No. Or can we? Well it is towards the town. So it is, yeah, <laughs> I suppose you uh, it is going to be then Chesterfield who will go first, and it will be Lawrence Maguire who will take the first penalty. Now, Ross Fitzsimmons saved a couple in the penalty shootout victory over Files. Will he do something similar here, or will it be Chesterfield of the National League heading through? We are down to a penalty shootout, then one all after the 90 minutes, and it is going to be Maguire who will step up first against Fitzsimmons. So Chesterfield to take the first penalty. Maguire, left-footed, wonderful penalty. Fitzsimmons dived the right way, but Maguire put it into the side of the net. And it's Chesterfield to score the first one. Yeah, great penalty. It was a good height for Fitzsimmons, but enough pace and power and accuracy to make sure the Boston goalkeeper couldn't get a hand on it. Yeah, good, penal good starting penalty for Chesterfield, that. Jordan Burrow then to take the first penalty in this shootout for Boston United. Just places the ball down on the spot. Going to be a right-footed penalty. Burrow up against Wharton. Burrow saved by Wharton. It wasn't the greatest of penalties. Had decent power, but was pretty central. And Chesterfield with the early advantage. Yeah, poor penalty. The right height wasn't enough power and put it in the corner. And Wharton with a, with a comfortable save there, I say. To give Chesterfield the early advantage in this shootout. Rowley, who had numerous chances in the game to score, up against Fitzsimmons. Pressure already on Boston for missing the first penalty. Rowley, right footed, ready for the second. Referee blows on his whistle. Rowley steps up. Oh, another great penalty, this time going in the opposite corner. Fitzsimmons diving to his right, but again, low penalty, good penalty from Chesterfield. And they've got a two out of two so far in the shootout. Yeah, two good penalties from Chesterfield. This time low and hard into that bottom right-hand corner, giving Fitzsimons absolutely no chance at all. Bit of a pressure on Paul Green here. So Green for Boston. Long run-up goes to the edge of the D. Boston need to score this penalty, and Green does to the goalkeeper's left into the top corner. And it is 2-1 to Chesterfield after two penalties. Up next for Chesterfield is the Number 17 is the substitute, Jack McCourt, taking penalty number three. Two good penalties from Chesterfield so far. One going bottom right, one going bottom left. What will McCourt do here? Fitzsimmons has gone the right way both times, but has been unable to get to them. So can Chesterfield maintain their advantage in this shootout with penalty number three? McCourt steps up, right-footed. Fitzsimmons this time goes the wrong way. It goes to his right. Another good penalty. Chesterfield three from three. Yeah. Every, every penalty has been spot on from Chesterfield. Absolutely no chance for Ross Fitzsimons in the goal. Again, Connor DeMay with a little bit of pressure again. He needs to really score this. Otherwise, the ball goes down to Fitzsimons. So DeMeo, short run up. DeMeo with the penalty. Oh, he's put it wide. Was that safe from the goalkeeper? Was that just wide? I think it was just wide. I think that's a poor penalty. He just never looked settled, did he? No, really, really poor penalty from Connor DeMeo. So all Chesterfield need to do is score, and they are through in what has been a disappointing penalty shootout. From Boston's perspective, we've had a poorly hit penalty there from Demir. He, did, he didn't. He never looked settled when he. It was. It's mm. like there was no run up. It was just uh, strange. Too casual for me. There was no purpose in his run up. So it, it didn't is. Didn't look like he had a clear idea where he was going to put it. Tom Whelan to put Chesterfield through to the next round of the FA Trophy. Whelan strikes it straight down the middle and it is Chesterfield who head through in a penalty shootout. They win by four goals 
to one in the shootout. One all after the 90 minutes and Boston exit the competition, Mark. Yeah, disappointing for Boston United. I'll just say that it just goes back to that corner. They conceded. It's a soft goal conceded. CrossFit Simmons has really had nothing to do in that second half. And it's just a shame that Boston United couldn't really match the penalties that their performance probably deserved. And they'll be disappointed. That's a, that's a poor goal to concede from the corner. And then the penalties, well, Conor De Mayo, just, I don't know exactly what he tried to do there. It just, it just looked, didn't look like he was, like you say, he was settled. He didn't know what he was going to do with it. It just looked a, a, a poor, poor penalty. And it's a shame because, you know, to go out on penalties is always a shame. But to go out with a little bit of a whimper like they've done is even more disappointing. Terry Hawker's never even got to take one. I know. He came on as a sub in the last minute and never even got to take one. And, well, Wharton, the goalkeeper, getting the praise of uh, his teammates. What a, an evening for him. And, and well, for Boston United, they, they went in front and then they had two chances. One which they couldn't do a lot about, Ross Fitzsimmons from the goal kick who nearly scored. But you go back to that DeMeo chance, stealing the ball off the defence and just didn't put it on target, put it well over the bar. and. and that's the kind of, of chance when you're coming up against a, a good National League side, which Chesterfield looked tonight. 